Lord just said that. Uh, I can't believe it. Uh, that one dog goes on a leash, right? That you get on. Will really? They, yeah, will not eat. And they both just The mastiff? No, the mastiff, he'll eat. He'll eat every time. Okay. But, but he stays in bed. He won't yeah. get out of his bed. Hello. Hey, Miss Katie. How are you? I'm the best there is. How about yeah, you? We're good. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. The, uh, but the little baby is just, I just, I can't say anything. Uh, just sit the right beside me. Yeah. And anytime I move, she wants to yeah. you know, be wherever I am. But I don't know if she's right. Yeah. 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 Well, they don't, some of them don't like change at all. Uh, well, I heard there's a lot of uh, dogs that were gotten during the pandemic while well, everybody was home. Now they're going to yeah. to adjust when yeah. they're yeah. Yeah. going back out. Because yeah. this one came to us during the pandemic. Yeah. So the show's never been gone until recently. Mm -hmm. She's freaking around. Well, mm. uh, in the spring when the weather was nice, I, I walked down your street. Oh, did you? Uh -huh, during you lunch. Start? Well, I don't know what you're up to. You know, I didn't, know, I didn't want to bother. No, no, no. I'm but, usually, you know, hanging out. I've been in the backyard a lot more in the front yard. No, yeah. I'm on the front porch, but I've been in the backyard more. And, yeah. And uh, been working with my, my mother-in-law, one in her backyard. Done. So I spent about three weeks, eight hours a day, uh, you know, carving that thing out. Yeah. Yeah. But now with the rain, I know that I had no weight from it at all. I was like, man, for months. I, in fact, I was having to eat heavy, trying to keep weight up. And right. all of a sudden, since the rain, now I get you on know, the scale each morning and I'm like, oh no, I gave it up a pound or so. So I see it was activity. <laughs> I, must, <laughs> I must have been busier than yeah. I thought I was uh, yeah. during that time. So, so I've got a, then today I went out between raindrops for three or four miles. You know, but, uh, yeah. Katie, how's the sow guy doing? The sow guys are done, the CBD survey is done. Wow. I'm just still inputting all the data into the database. But it's done. Hey, how are you? That's good. good. Yeah. I don't know what. It's been busy, busy, but it's been good. I don't know where this short went. I have. And so I've just had this iPad recently instead of a laptop, and it's different. Everything on it's different than a laptop. Even the Mac, like going Mac, Mac. Yeah, I got, I've got, I've got, we had a Mac laptop, and then I, when I got sick and was going to be in Birmingham for months, I uh, mm -hmm. got the iPad because I thought that would be easy. And I thought it'd be, I was just like, I thought it'd be the same, but I'm sorry, but, oh, I don't know. Completely different. Yeah, so now, yeah. now I've figured out how to manipulate both of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Seen your wife this morning. Did you? Yeah. I'm going to off early. I got a 445 on the gym. I'll be away for a ride. She, she does. Uh, she does something to buy some tea now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like, you're out of your mind. I've done that since college. I'm up, yeah. but I'm not doing that kind of thing. Lazy. Yeah. <laughs>
that's for today. Uh -huh. Is that the agenda? Do you have another copy of the agenda? chance to look at the minutes for June 15th, 2021. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Aye. All right. Financial report. Uh, I got the financial report in uh, for the first time this year. Uh, I decided to go on a cruise and write a six thousand dollar check. <laughs> and we're calling it for preservation, but we do about it. This is for preservation for six thousand uh, dollars. we will be reimbursed on that correctly. So our current balance is one thousand three hundred and three dollars and ninety seven cents. Okay. Thank you, Scott. All right, moving on to design committee report. Okay, so um, let's see, we have three applications. 
questions? Mm -hmm. I'll start with um, one was, let's see, at, wait, this is their address. Oh, the property address is 128 East Tennessee Street. This is the old, um, or do you want me to go in more? Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, this is for, there's going to be a new record shop, and gift shop there, and there it was just a sign application. So they're requesting to paint um, their logo on the front of the building. The brick has already been painted, so we're not worried about painting and painted masonry. Um, and then they'll have a hanging sign, like a little shingle type of sign that hangs perpendicular to the building. Um, and this is the the image for that. So it's 18 by 18 inches, which fits within, I think, all the sign ordinances. Um, and that's the one at 128 East Tennessee. And the, the recommendation is? Uh, the committee recommends that we approve as is. It meets all of our, all of our guidelines. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, the second one is um, 706 Riverview Drive. Homeowners are wanting to change the front door and Side light, which has the glass blocks in it, to a double door with a single pane in each door. Um, the committee discussed it. They, they submitted a really thorough application, which you'll see um, with images. They also talked to the previous owner, and she's the one who actually put the glass block in. So those are not original to the house. Um, I think it was probably a solid glass before that. Um, they said there's some wood rot on the existing door. Um, and they, and they will not have to cut into the brick at all. They'll just be replacing that entire you know, door side light kit with a double door kit without changing the opening any, or expand, you know, making it any bigger. Um, Whose house is this? It's the Baxters, Andy and Sarah Baxter, um, in the Riverview District. And we discussed, you know, all the different things as far as like the style and what's appropriate. The committee ultimately um, decided that we would recommend approving it. Um, we think that the style lines up. They're not cutting into the brick to, you know, make it fit or anything like that. And if, if I could interject, I, yeah. I think it improves the appearance of the home. And it's a, there's precedent in other places in the neighborhood for similar style doors on houses from a similar time period and style. So we felt like it was appropriate. Can we see the full facade? The front facade? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you take a look, Scott, at the windows and how that seems to mirror the same design as you know, the openness, the, the simplicity, also, there was a little, like, the homeowner believes that the door that's there now is actually a replacement door from the 90s. We're not sure. It looks like it could be original, but we don't know for sure. And they have some evidence that suggests it could have been replaced later, so there's that, too. Like, we don't even know if the existing door is what was originally there. But. I'll make a motion to Second. All in favor? Okay. And the third one, this one, is a bit more significant. This is going to be on that lot where um, Potts and Young burned down downtown. Yes. yes. Over behind Pink Sherrod's building. Uh, so this is going to be new construction. It's um, Create Architects building. Um, so you can look at it, but it's it's a dark brick. It's not painted brick. The brick itself is dark. Um, they're talking about leaving the sides. That that's actually open, but it kind of makes it. I feel like you could describe this better than I'm just like saying words. <laughs> um, well, I don't know about that, but 
I'll, I'll make an attempt. So um, if you look at the, the left side of the front facade, you see that the brick is kind of overlapping in a way that it's a screen. So the actual building is not touching the adjacent building, which, which I think was, um, was a good idea in, in um, they didn't have to do this, but I think that it was a courteous thing to do. The adjacent building has windows on that face. So if they had built their building, if they're building their building right adjacent to, they would be covering up their neighbor's windows, so to speak. So, so that screen. This, this part right here is facing the sun, trust me. Yes, right. If go down to the floor plan, please, Brian. So you see there that there is, on the left side, you'll see that there is that void there where they have their HVAC units and whatever, whatever ugly there is, you know, we're going to cover that up with that brick screen. And then the people that have the windows on to the adjacent side will be able to actually escape in, in the event of a fire or what have you. Um, which is a lot of times what windows are for. Um, and then you'll see that the back, they've, at the back of the property, they have a big courtyard back there. Um, and the, the existing wall, the existing buildings that are there at the very top and then to the left, you'll see that they're just using that as as part of their courtyard. Um, parking, they've only allowed two parking spaces. They explained that they park in the parking garage um, and that those parking spaces will be for their folks that are working there, such as uh, the receptionist or anyone that's drafting, what have you, that they plan to have all their other people park in the parking garage. Um, and, that, and they'll get their alley access. What else am I missing? Uh, I was just going to add that I think they did a nice job of, um, you know, it's the appropriate size and scale and setback for the historic district and for downtown. Um, it doesn't attempt to look like a historic replica, which is, you know, not considered best practice, but it does borrow some things mm -hmm. from some of the historic styles downtown, such as the brick corbeling around the windows and some of that. So the I thought, windows. Yeah, I yeah. thought all of that was um, nicely done. And that's, yeah, the I think for a new build in the downtown historic district, this is an excellent design. Mm -hmm. I think this is what we, you know, we could. Um, their, um, their logo is on Alabama limestone. I don't know if you noticed that on the mm -hmm. end there, um, which I can appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the stone and the brick too. Those are both traditional building materials, which is appropriate mm -hmm. for the area. So the committee reviewed this, and the architect actually came to the meeting, so we got a chance to talk with her and ask questions, and we um, recommend approving this as submitted. I motion to approve. All right, that is everything from the design uh, committee report. The next design review will be uh, second Tuesday in August, right here at 8.30. So that's August 10th at 8.30, and we will be reviewing all of the applications that are sent our way for the month of On to old business ordinance update. Really, that should say uh, guidelines update. And I can give this because I've been working on them. We are moving forward 
and I'll probably send out the rough draft of the guidelines before next meeting, and we will likely have that as new business in August. So hopefully every member will get an opportunity to read them before we vote on them. Um, this is going to be more of a more comprehensive to the residential districts than we currently have, but the commercial districts will likely stay the same. Uh, we're still going to be using the Alabama Main Street guidelines, and um, and that's relative. That there's hardly anything to change in there, but the design review guidelines will give homeowners and ourselves a better basis of, of what we're operating on and what to look for. Um, and I'll be, so I'll be sending those out sometime next month. Any questions about the design guidelines? Video update. Jen, do you want to talk about this? Sure. Um, Brian and I got together um, a couple weeks ago to talk about what, what our next steps would be. Um, and we decided that Katie and Brian would come up with the content of the videos, and then that would then be passed on to Kayla. And Kayla would be putting together a storyboard, if you will, or images, or what have you, and then she would pass it on to me, and then I would review it. So we're all, we're, we're working together, but separately. Um, probably going to get together in parties of two, if at all. Um, most most information will be talked about via email or text, telephone. Um, and so at this point, uh, when Katie and Brian finish up the content and what we need to put in these videos, they'll be passing it along to Kayla. And um, I'm not sure when that would be. Do you have an idea, Brian? Of when you guys might have something ready. After the design review guidelines, so probably later August for the September meeting. Okay. Okay. Questions about the video? Yes, I have a question. Um, it was kind of vague of what the video, um, this video, what the purpose for it is. Is this um, for like guidelines for for residential people who want to work on their houses or what's the purpose of this video yeah there are we're looking to produce three different videos one is for realtors one is for developers and one is for existing um, property owners two of them are going to be for the commercial district and one is going to be for the residential district it's basically going to outline our process and how homeowners what they can expect when they go to make alterations to their home okay Other questions? CBD survey? It is finished. Um, I'm still, well, I say it's finished and I'm still finalizing the database details, but that's because I want to send it all to the State Historical Commission. They have a new uh, interactive map where they can input all, like what we send, and then Anybody that we can use it too can pull up an individual property and see what year it was built and what the architectural style is and all and whether it would be contributing or not to the district. So um, that's happening. And then I don't know what. Do you have any news on the deadline for that? Uh, no, we, it's just a matter of processing at this point. But the grant is, as Scott mentioned, that is um, going to be reimbursed probably before our next meeting. Um, and I just want to point out on that website that, I don't know if it was the same one, but that website has a lot of really good information about individual listings and a lot of really good um, dates and 
of structures and images. So that's going to be an excellent tool for all of us to use in the, in the future. Yeah, and it, that just happened in like the last year. So when mm -hmm. we first started talking about this survey, we thought it would be cool if the city could help us do mm -hmm. something like that on a map. Um, and we were talking with planning about it, but then the state came out with theirs. And so our data can just, because we'll give them the survey data anyway, and now you can just pull up their map, and it's really easy to use. You can click through on any, any individual property um, and pull up the information from the survey. Is this, for, is this for the whole state, or is it just for one? Alabama did it for the whole state. So any pro, anything that's been surveyed, that's been submitted into their you know survey system, anything that's on the National Register, the State Register, has a state historical marker, or uh, I mean they have other things too, like Rosenwald schools and cemeteries from the cemetery register, anything like that, it's on there. It's all color coded and symbols and you can click on it and it's got either the information right there or a PDF to the document. I mean, it's really impressive. I, I'm nerdy about it, but I love it. <laughs> it's, it's made my job a lot easier when we do research and stuff. I find stuff so much easier. It's amazing. You can see the boundaries of districts really easily without having a map of yourself. And, Cool. It's a great tool for us in terms of, of, of reviewing applications when somebody sends something in. Mm -hmm. It'll be a tool that already has a documented image of what that building looks like, and then also any of the metadata that Katie's under in terms of style, materials, historical notes. Yeah. yeah. Which is exactly what we wanted for that district because, as you all recall, a couple years ago when we found out that the Central Business District falls under our jurisdiction. No idea what's over there, so this is going to be, um, and hopefully we can uh, we can get more of the existing districts on there. I don't know if the state hires somebody to go through and do that. I think they already are. Oh. Well, they're not. They they don't get individually okay. listed. It'll link to the entire national register nomination, gotcha. and there's a shaded like polygon for the district. But when you do a survey like this, where the outcome is not a National Register nomination, there's just a dot on each property. All right, questions about the Central Business District survey? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so what, is, um, what, is, what does that stand for, this um, CBD? Central Business District. Okay, so does that only apply to historical sites, or is this gathering information on all properties, was, you guys were kind of vague about that. And, I mean, the central business district is designated by city council. Yeah, and that encompasses the downtown historic district, and it is basically a reference point for businesses that uh, fall within that geographical jurisdiction. So it's like a database of information that people can access. I mean, what, what's the survey part? I mean, yeah, like a lot of the architectural surveys that we already have, or people have done, they're listings of buildings by the year built, the style built. It serves as a reference guide for us when we're asked to review those properties. Is this accessible to the public or just for committees and council members and such? It's accessible. Yeah. They're all public records. I think it's, is it, what is it? It's ArcGIS, I'm not exactly sure though. If you go to the Allen Historical Commission's website, mm -hmm. uh, it says something like, it's their interactive map. The Alabama what commission? The Alabama Historical Commission, it's our state historical commission. The state one? Office. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's in Montgomery. Yeah, these are reference lists of historic, kind of like the National Register listings, but it's more for, um, it's more for general use and not necessarily that level of a database. It's more for making decisions for local municipalities. Okay, I just wanted to clear clear that up for people who might watch this and not know what you're talking about. Moving on to new business, we have a marker that fell down. Um, if I can get this back up. And... Anyone know where the Wilson Cemetery? 
Mayor Betterton emailed and said that this marker fell down. It is the Wilson Family Cemetery in the Plantation Spring Soap. That's oh. one of the golf course. I've seen that. That's the gentleman right there. Okay. Is the marker for the cemetery or is it for the plant? For the, for the, for the it's for the cemetery. It's broken. It's broken. Second, third this year? On that How did that happen? Like, how did they Not bring the same one that out? Oh, that's right. One that's called the other one. That one looks like someone hit the post. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't see golf, but why don't we take that? With the. Um, I mean, most of them are on city property. Yeah. Yeah, but that one, though, was. What if we decide, um, what was it in the last year when we passed the um, historic markers guidelines? Yeah. Were, were the existing ones kind of grandfathered in? I know we had passed a thing that future ones yep. would be the responsibility, maintenance would be the responsibility of the party. Correct. So those are, these are still our responsibility because yeah. they're already here. This was probably put up in the last 10, 15 years. Okay. Um, they put it up on the good golf course when it was put up. Yeah. When was that? It was been over 10 years. Oh, yeah. Probably. 10, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Would, how, would, I, would we have to pay to replace the whole thing, or can it be repaired? I think we have to replace the whole thing. Uh, I don't know if a weld at that. Yeah. So they probably replace like everything black they, part. They replace the, the entire. Yeah. Oh, it is, so and we've got no, no. We've got the posts, okay. and uh, the street department has a bunch of extra posts. They would just send the marker and mm -hmm. uh, put it up. The street department has been very excellent about supporting and helping us out in terms of putting these up. Is it both sides or one side? It is. <laughs> it's like hot and moist. It's on both sides of the But I mean, like, is it different text? Do you know? I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. They're just. I'm not sure they one side. Right? It know. doesn't say on the bottom, continued on the other side, okay. so it's yeah. probably not. It's something you have to drive to the What well, how does this like do we have to replace it? Part of this one part. I kind of agree with this one because it was part of the family they called the farm and this man was given to him was this marker that we put up in the cemetery. Mm. Oh, that was part of it. was part of it. I couldn't run. Was that a, deal, a, a thing they did in the city, though? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if we could ask council for the money to request it. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't remember this battle was all fall. Mm -hmm. so I say that I can't remember why they break the shit for me. So it's. So the options before us are to vote to spend our appropriation to replace. I, I personally don't talk to Andy about this person, just postpone this from next meeting, whatever. Okay. Because I, I remember this meeting because I was pissed because they put me falling the golf. I mean, I, mm -hmm. So I went to listen to all this. I remember, I remember this meeting. And how much is one of these signs? About $2,600, dollars And Ryan Dallas is, you know, Brian on that cruise and one got for a ticket on the boat. And is that what they were last year? Or is that what they are right now? That's because now. costs, that's what it is right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because metal has gone up quite a bit. I haven't heard that they've gone up. I'm ordering one right now. Okay. I think when, when we ordered one a few years ago, it was 26, and then now it's about 27. Do you think the agreement was between the city and the golf course? That's what I want to find out. Okay. And yeah, I tried to work once more. I'm 
Uh, so Scott, you're saying that this was not a Florence historical board marker? I don't think it was. I think that part of the reason was the land was given to Well, I'm sure the historical board approved it. So I'm sure they either wrote it or approved it, but I just think if it was a deal struck with the golf course in the city, then maybe we have to uncover it. So we are going to find out who installed this marker and then um, delay the vote on it until August. That work? How did we become aware of this? He, he sent it to me. Oh, no, Andy did? Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Which the presumption was that we were going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and a question or comments about the Wilson Family Center. Yeah, I have a question about that marker. Um, it was mentioned, uh, the wording on the marker was mentioned. I was wondering, does this commission have any um, sway over changing the wording for, um, for old markers or any existing markers that go up around the city, or this one in particular? If there are errors, any historical errors in the tax we have in the past, gone and replaced to correct those errors. Does it raise the cost if we have tax on both sides? No, because you can either do duplicate tax or new tax. It raised the cost if you do different tax on both sides. Okay. It's more expensive. I think are these receipts are ordered from Siegel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's more expensive if you print different text on both sides. I think that's you why you raised the question about text. Yes. On, it was because if it's a different text on the yes. other side, it would increase the cost. Yes, that's why I was asking. It's, it's not the content, it was, mm -hmm. yeah. If in fact it was that. What was the last one that we, was it the? Uh, the one at UNA was a double side, like two oh, text. Like no, I'm talking about the one that we, um, had to send back because it was wrong. Oh, the oh, one about what happened to you about the house. The dates were wrong. The dates were wrong. They were able to, did they completely replace that one or were they, they were able to change it? Uh, yeah, it was still like 1300 to change the dates Just to as, change far, the as far dates. as I recall. Yeah. Is that about right, Chuck? Yes, sir. Alright. Okay. Um, about all I got. Any other comments or questions before we adjourn? Next meeting is Tuesday, August 17th, 2021, at 5 p.m. right here. Um, and as I said, the design committee will meet August 10th, at 30, right here. For a motion. Second. All right, I will see you all sometime next week. Drag on forever, I can't believe it.